Okay, so we're gonna do some work on the Volvo today. Almost ready to get on the road apart from these crappy tires, but I'm gonna drive it on those anyways because I had the car for a couple weeks and I haven't driven it yet. I test the compression on this thing and I got 150 in number one, 120 and 120 in these two, and then 150 on the one on the end on number four cylinder. So that 30 PSI drop kind of concerns me. It's probably, I'm thinking it might be head gasket just because maybe the head's lift off here. Or it warped a little bit there. Um, but it still runs. Uh, since it had low compression, I decided I was going to tighten the valves or uh, do a little valve check on it. And while I was tightening one of the valves, I broke off this adjuster screw. Like it just sheared right off. Um, I have a new one coming in today. And should have it running today. So basically, I'm just going to take off the valve cover and uh, take the whole valve assembly off of there, or lifter assembly. And I painted my brakes red. You can barely see them, but I'm gonna get some, some better, nicer wheels on this thing, and hopefully some wider tires, since these things are like freaking pizza cutters. Should be on the road today. Now some things that I've figured out about this car is that it has, this is a 1967 car, and it has, where the heck does it say it? Well, it says 1968 somewhere. Or maybe I'm just stupid and I thought that was a one. Hmm. Okay, well, it used to have power brakes. That's what this bracket's for. But now it has uh, manual brakes, which I guess that's all right. That's fine. That's about it. It's uh, interesting. It does have. It already has uh, some an IBD uh, front and rear sway bar with poly bushings. Sorry about the train. Overall, I mean, it's not too bad. None of the, I mean, the uh, headlights don't work, but the little marker lights do. It doesn't have any grills or a front bumper on it. Um, it's got different mirrors. Inside's all right. These are seat covers. I'm gonna get rid of these seats because they are just, they're shot. Um, this thing actually used to have red interior, which I think would have been sick, but uh, they painted it black. So it's all paint. It's kind of a bummer, but you can see, like down here, there's a little bit of red they missed. Yeah, red in there. I mean, I'm gonna have to do some body work. I already knew that. Um, this is a pretty sharp dent. I'm not really sure I'm gonna get that out. This is a pretty heavy duty door. But main thing here is the rust. So I'm in Washington and see the floor pan's completely rusted through. This cross member thingy all rusted in there. Uh, this rear floor pan up here is probably the worst of it. See that? Yeah, it's nice and rusty in there. So I'll make a video of me. I'll probably just, I'm not gonna buy like like actual floor pans for it. I'll probably just make flat ones. Um, so yeah, I'll probably make a video of me fixing all that rust. And there's also, I mean, there's rust up in these fenders too. So I will fix all of that, and it will be sturdy. But yeah, like I said, right now we're going to do valve cover, take valve cover off and get ready for my new parts that are coming in today. All right, so there's four valve cover um, bolts on here and they take a 716 size socket, I think. Yes, they do. And there's a washer on there, so be sure not to drop that. I guess before you do that, you should take crossover tube off of there. I don't know where you want to put it. Oil filler. This thing gets a lot of oil trapped inside of it somehow. But there. Now we can go ahead and take these off.
probably replace the valve cover gasket, but mine's in okay condition and it's not getting cleaned up or anything. It's usually when you have to replace it if it's dry or something, but this has that different cover on it. Alright, so this is pretty clean in there. So that's good. Let me show you what I broke here. So as I said earlier, I broke the adjuster nut. So these things, so these things on top, this one, that one I broke, this one right here. So I have a new one coming, but I just have to take this, the whole uh, rocker assembly. It's only four bolts and I'm sure there's a sequence to it. Okay, so this rocker assembly is a one half takes a one half. So I'm going to do this one, that one, middle, out. That just seems like a logical thing to do. Probably could have used this from the beginning, but uh, prefer not to. Seems like all right. Probably clean them off anyways. They're all out. Very, very oily. As to be expected, I'm glad it's oily. If it were not, that'd be a bigger problem. There's my broken one. It does not want to come all the way out. We'll stop right there. I probably, I'll probably just use some some pliers to grab it and get it out. I don't think it'll strip anything. This is pretty strong. I'll just leave all the other ones where they are because I'm pretty sure they're all adjusted correctly when I was checking them before, before I broke this one. They all seemed pretty good. So, I'll take that out and we'll be ready for the new one. So I'll just wait for that to come in. All right, so I'm gonna take out what's remaining in this um, adjuster screw. I'm a firm believer, I always use the right tool for the job and that's why I'm using this. So, I'm just gonna grab it. It's working. You know, more leverage the better, is my saying. Alright, so I didn't work too well. I need to get smaller pliers. These are a little bit more reasonable. Should be able to get this out. Huh. Threads are a little, a little messed up on there, so I will fix that. Alright, looks like it's coming out nice and easy now. Well, nice and easy with pliers. That was a weird noise. Okay, so you never want to tighten your nuts too hard, or else this is what you uh, you risk every time you tighten your nuts. So that's what it's supposed to be, and then that's what happens when you tighten your nuts too hard. This thing comes out of there, so I just gotta wait for the new part. 
FedEx. Well, actually, that could have worked, I bet. It's not coming out now. Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, I'm just waiting for FedEx. So. All right, so I just got my package from FedEx, and let's see what we got here. See, now this is this is from um, I think it's Classic Volvo Re um, Re Restoration or something. Dot com. That, this, these are my parts here. They're in here somewhere. This wrapped up paper. Here they are, and they're coming. Boom. That won't fit at all. I'm a little bummed out. This is not the right size at even close to my bleeder screw. Let me show you. Okay, so this is a bleeder screw that I kind of like welded a tip onto the top of it to try and make it like the other one. But this one didn't work. But this is the right thread. So that is a bummer. I don't know how I'm going to get the right one because I've no auto parts place has it, so that's a bummer. Don't need that anymore, it's garbage. But, this is going to make my engine run. It comes with the adjustment nut already. So we're going to put that on and get her started for you. This is my new part that I got. And we're going to put it on there. And get this all back together. Then I can start it up. Clean enough. But we'll just... And, and if this thing blows up or something goes wrong with it, I'm just going to swap it for something. Something faster, something cooler. But for now, this should do. So that thing's on there. Um, let's get the adjuster nut on there as well. I'm going to use the original adjuster nut just because it's a, it came with one, but I want it to look good, you know, in here where nobody sees anything. Okay, so that is good. And now I'm going to drop in our rocker arm thingy. Rocker arm screws. think there'd be like a washer on here or something but there's not <laughs> but yeah mine mine don't have washers on them I'm not sure if they're supposed to have washers it looks like there is like there would be um, if you guys have this engine you just whip that valve cover off real fast and look at this rocker assembly and let me know if there's uh, supposed to be washers on here but that looks like it's all on there so we're going to tighten her up you would think it would be Probably about 35 foot pounds. I done messed up here. Yeah. All right, so now we're gonna set our valve clearances, at least just for this one. So I have to rotate the engine around. These are all tight. Probably around 40 foot pounds. I don't know what it's supposed to be, but felt like 40 foot pounds. Okay, so the clearance is supposed to be, whatever, clearance is supposed to be 0.016 inches, and this guy is quite a bit more than that, probably double that. You just get that to where it slides in there. Alright, so this is where I broke it last time. Too tight. That's right where we want it. Let's just rotate it a couple more times and we'll, we'll check clearances all around. There's a few good videos on this on YouTube about how to do it, so I'm not going to go 
to death about it. Looks like we're ready to put the valve cover back on, tighten it all back up, see what, see how it rolls. Whenever you're tightening down something long like this, or with multiple bolts, you want to do it in a pattern. It doesn't make it warp or anything, or else you're gonna have leaks. Look at it. Everything looks pretty good. Let's start her up. Alright, so I cleaned the battery off. And just the tip, guys, don't ever buy O'Reilly's brand batteries. Um, I've had this one for not even a year. Uh, I bought it in August of last year, and it's July now. And it's already leaking battery acid out of the positive terminal. And I've actually had three of these batteries, all, and they're $160, they're not cheap batteries. So the first one I bought, that one practically exploded. Um, the case ruptured right around here and it was just leaking battery acid everywhere. So I went and got that one returned on warranty. And then I got another one, and I had I had this one for probably uh, six, seven months maybe, and it, it just completely ran out of battery and it actually killed my alternator. My alternator was trying to charge it, and um, they told me that the battery's junk, so I got this one, and now it's leaking battery acid also. And I have them in my usually in my Montero, but and it's not the car. I have another battery in there right now, and it's it's doing perfectly fine. Starts it every day. It's not leaking anything. It's it's these batteries, and they're 160 dollars, and it's, it's not worth it. Go buy a Walmart battery. And... All right, so we're gonna start it up. I don't think it's getting gas right now, so it might take a little while. We'll see. You don't know how to think about it. It might just be out of gas completely, but I want to hear it start. So. The zip ties the whole air filter on. has low compression so it's really not running that well but that's what it sounds like